Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, I get to speak with Doug Cohen. I got, I had the opportunity to work with him in past companies and we've stayed in connection since then. And today we get to talk with him about some cool stuff. Uh, some of the things on the podcast I've been talking about is mobile video production. And that's one of the things that Doug is interested in as well. Hey, Doug, thanks for taking the time to come on the podcast. Great. Thanks for inviting me onto the podcast. You know, I've never never done one of these things before. And they say you never forget your first time. It's just mm-hmm. a fortunate minds with a man, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? This uh, podcasting is very addicting because it is a very easy medium. Um, unlike video, you don't have to show your face. It's all about your audio and you get to, when you talk to people that you like and you, you know, admire, it's just become so natural, like having a conversation with your friend. I mean, the one time that we had a good time was when we were driving, driving together back to work I or back my from work. Was broken down and you gave me a ride home. We both lived yeah. pretty far away from work and yeah. we were sitting in a, a packed um, highway and we had plenty of good quality time to talk about. I think we solved most of the problems in the world. Yeah, we did. I just don't think we shared them with anybody. I know. See, so if you were recording that episode. (laughs) (laughs) I love, I I love the concept of sitting and having a conversation Mm -hmm. um, and letting it be organic and Mm -hmm. uh, sharing it with a whole bunch of other people that, you know, are listening that may, that may also find some of it interesting or they might find it boring. By the way, anybody out there is listening, if you find it boring. So yeah, from the channel. I myself like serious coffee house, um, but that's mm-hmm. just a reflection of me getting older and liking to listen to rock music mm-hmm. more softly now. Nice. Yeah. So a lot of us podcasters, we enjoy the same uh, thing that you just mentioned, you know, just hanging out with friends and talking about what we love. There's um, I would, actually, my, I was talking to a friend of mine and he recently just started his podcast to document the process of creating a movie. And you you mentioned about making some music videos and he's going to be using some DSLRs. And, and since he recently moved to New York, he's like, there's so much happening here. So to get into some of the things that you might, you know, need to do a uh, home video production, essentially, Hey, uh, for music I, videos. Can I just interrupt one more? Of course. I am amazed at how kind of easy and low bar this was to set up. And I just wanted to share that thought because I'm, I literally clicked on a link which launched a browser. And next thing I know, we're talking and I see some representation of the audio of you and me talking. And mm-hmm. it couldn't be easier to set this up and, and do one of these things. So absolutely I'm impressed. I might you know I might have to I might have to follow you and do it <laughs> myself you betcha so and that's that's the power of the Zencaster tool uh, which enables multiple parties to be having a conversation together and recording some high quality audio I know a lot of people that I know uh, use either zoom or Skype or Google Hangouts and they use the recording features of that software And sometimes the audio quality is good. Sometimes it's not so much. Uh, It works. Zoom works really good, especially when we're, when I want to bring in somebody that's remote and does have access to a desktop, then they could do a Zoom conversation and then I can record the audio through that one as well. Right. So anyway, music. So I'm interested in music. I'm kind of an amateur wannabe guy who hangs out a lot in my room. I call it my, I have a little sign that says, this is my happy place and my wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do feel safest in, and, and most free in my room. Some people do it in their car, I go to the bathroom. For me, it's this little room. And so I'm recording some music, 
but mm-hmm. I want to I want to shoot some video. And some of that okay. is me just playing with the music, and some of it may be, you know, other other scenes. But, yeah. Um, I just I don't know how to go about that. How do I how do I start that process? What tools mm-hmm. do I need? You know, mm-hmm. and I know that you, you do a lot of that stuff. So I'm just interested in learning from you so that I can um, get started. Absolutely. So some of the things that you need, and and you you already have a smartphone, so you're already halfway there. I have access to more than one. So you have more than one phone. Is it a lot more beneficial to have more than one going on at the same time? Or do you just shoot scenes individually and then stick? So there's multiples, uh, multiple schools of thoughts. And if you look at, um, so there's, there's several ways a video is produced. For example, sitcoms, they use multiple camera angles. So you can switch. They're having a, they're having the scene happening at the same time, and they'll switch the camera angles based on who's talking. So they do one take, and then they have multiple cameras running. So that way they can grab multiple angles. And most of the times it's like a – any sitcom, if you see, they have kind of like a, a, a square room setup, but then you only see two walls at a time. Mm. You won't see the third and the fourth wall because that's where the cameras are sitting. Okay. And so they have these third and fourth wall is where they have the camera gear and they're never crossing lines. Like, like you won't see the other camera because you always want to make sure that one camera doesn't see the other camera. So you, that's called crossing the lines. Okay. Um, so you could do, and then if you look at movies, they have a single camera setup. Basically the same camera is being used to record every single scene all the record backs and and over the shoulder all those are using the same one camera because the actors are so good at delivering the lines they will repeat that same line over and over and you can capture it and then edit it together so i like to use two camera setup because that way i can get two angles of me talking and if i skipped or i am missing I'm forgetting something. I can switch from one camera audio and cut the audio part that I don't like and then switch to the other angle. So that way I can like break up dead space and have more engagement in the audio. So my questions there are, if I were to use more than one camera, mm-hmm. how do I, and, and in all cases, if it was one or multiple cameras, sure. I'd want to seek, sync it. To mm-hmm. the audio track that already existed. So yes. whatever I'm whatever I'm recording through mm-hmm. the, the video is mm-hmm. got a toss because I will have pre recorded audio. So the question I guess I have is how do I sync the video to the audio? Is that just in the desktop editing tool? It would yes. It would be in the de- desktop editing tool. Plus there are some there is one specific application that I'm thinking about that will enable you to first of all edit your final shot in it. So for example, in TV studios, they use something called a switcher. The uh-huh. switcher has a view of all the live cameras that are you know, recording audio or recording video, and they can say, okay, go to scene one, or go to camera one, go to camera two, go to camera three. So there's a on-set director that's talking to the camera, uh, the, 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 oper- the switch operator, to switch between the different camera angles. And whenever you were watching live sports, they have the same setup. They have multiple cameras online that are, you know, recording their angles. And then there's a switchboard. When you're watching a sports game, the switcher dude is the one that's switching between one angle to the other angle. And then they do they do the replays of, you know, basketball shots or whatever. So that's the switcher studio. Okay. duty to do because one of the things i was thinking so the, mm-hmm. uh, the digital audio workstation tool that i use has a feature mm-hmm. that i really like called comping mm-hmm. and what it does is it just lets you do multiple takes of a certain passage of music mm-hmm. and it stacks them and then what you can do is you can highlight the different takes and mm-hmm. composite together yep. you know, one take and so i was kind of hoping that if i had something that allowed me to, you know, kind of import multiple shots 
yes. some way sync them up so they're synced to the audio track. Mm -hmm. and then go through and literally just highlight the sections that I want. And Absolutely. Is that the way these things generally work? Or do they yeah, yeah. So when you're doing video production or video editing, uh, there's several applications. There's Adobe Premiere Pro. There's... Um, uh, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, I'm not sure if is able to do that, but uh, I use, I've used Premiere Pro before, but f in Final Cut Pro, you can bring in all of the video that you have and you can say, okay, this is my first take, this is my second take, this is my third take. And since there's audio present on each of the video files, it can sync through those takes and then you can choose which take you want to use for your scene. So it automatically syncs the videos mm -hmm. based on the audio. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Based on the audio attached to that video. Now, so that's one of the reasons. Or the audio track too? Right. So your camera is able to record the audio track. So what you would do, since you have two camera or three cameras set up, you enable, you have both of those cameras or both of those phones are recording audio as well. Right. And if they're recording the same audio and let's say you have pre-recorded audio, what you do is you play that pre-recorded audio and then record the two videos. And then when you bring in all of those videos in, they can sync up based on that one audio. And then let's say you don't want to use the audio from those videos. You don't need to. You can lay in your main audio track in there that matches up. That makes a lot of sense to me. That's, that's great info. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, in terms of shooting the the scene as it were mm -hmm. lighting what, what are your thoughts like what you know i got i got the lights that are in my house but mm -hmm. i'm assuming i might want different lighting than that or no yeah you would need a different lighting again it comes down to what kind of look you're trying to go for if you if you think there's some dark spots you can definitely um cover them up with adding some more light um most of the times in homes we have yellow light and um it looks it's it's great for us for the for our eyes because it doesn't hurt as much but on studio sets you will notice that they have white light or daylight so if you do not have that kind of lighting uh there's ways that you can change the color uh, profile but it's recommended that you get, um, you know, you get some white light. And there's several lighting studio, lighting kits that you can purchase at a lower price. But again, uh, you have to make sure your the lights are not coming in your shot. And and um, for example, set up a scene for me, so we, then we can figure out. All right. So let's just say I'm in my little area where I've got my guitar and a couple of guitars mm -hmm. on the wall mm -hmm. my little amp and my effects there mm -hmm. and i'm gonna and i have a little chair that's like a slipper chair it's like 60 inches off the floor and mm -hmm. i'm gonna play with the music and i'm mm -hmm. gonna have a camera that's kind of looking at me performing mm -hmm. and another mm -hmm. one that's probably more focused into uh what my hands are doing on the guitar the instrument mm -hmm. yeah and then you know i'm not looking for some sort of uh extravagance but something that doesn't i mean the, i guess the goal is to make it look pro quality but not make it look uh super dramatic mm -hmm. yep so i don't know so, what, what kind of lighting i should get how many of those things and I'm, i mean obviously some of that's gonna be dictated by cost because i don't want to spend more than like 100 150 bucks I'm sure do you have tall ceilings uh i don't know i think they're standard like 12 Okay, those are tall ceilings compared to mine because I only have eight-foot ceilings. <laughs> what kind of a house do you live in that only has eight-foot ceilings? Sorry, they're probably nine-foot ceilings. Okay. I mean, I'm um, not a tall person, but I, I don't know if you have eight-feet ceilings. No, yeah, no, you're right. Probably eight-foot doors. Maybe so, nine. I don't, I don't know. But so I, all you need is uh, simple LED lights. So you already have light from the ceiling. And that's filling in the certain air and looks like you're not moving a lot. I mean, you're moving in a certain respect, but you're not really walking around. You're sitting in one place. Yeah. So the two camera setup is, you know, one's going to be focused on your your guitar. The other is focused on the, the whole scene. So you can switch cut between those two scenes as 
what you're doing with the guitar. And you can even have three cameras, you know, one maybe on the neck, one on the where you're strumming. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I've got some old iPhones laying around, so I figured it doesn't hurt to just, you know, yeah. shoot. And some of them have different quality. But by the way, what what settings do I want to shoot in? So you want to shoot probably all of them at 1080, uh, 30 frames per second, or 24 if you want to be if you're if you're looking for the filmic look. Is that a setting on the? I'm looking at my phone right now. Is that a setting on the phone? So that would be a setting in the camera. Uh, applicate camera settings and uh, there is a specific app that I would recommend uh-huh. that you get and it's called Filmic Pro but then there's another application called uh, there's two follow? specific the first one is Filmic Pro Filmic Pro, and the second application is called Sling sorry is it Sling? No it's called Switcher Studio so Switcher Studio app is really cool. They do have a subscription model. So the what's cool about this specific one is that it enables you to connect up to nine iPhones together. Oh, cool. So you can have up to nine different angles. And let's say you have an iPad. You can, on the iPad, have your Switcher, main Switcher area. So what you can do, it's really great for live video. So you can broadcast it live on Facebook. And let's say you 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 have your iPad in front of you. Well, you definitely want to have a third person do the switching because as you're performing, you can be switching the camera. Right. But it's great to record multiple angles and then you can put them together. There's another app, uh, a sister app by Switcher Studio Producers called Rico. Let me look at their website. While you're looking at that, I'm looking at Filmic Pro. Mm-hmm. That's 15 bucks, which I don't mind. Yes. It's, right. it's my budget. It's in my studio budget. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, this is the thing that I'm actually going to shoot the videos. I'm going to use this app. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's, there's, mul- so, so what's cool about, I haven't tried this myself, but, um, Filmic Pro has a remote control functionality. For example, let's say you've got an app. I see it. Right. So you can so you can set up one phone on your tripod, and who's going to trigger it? Now you're sitting on your seat, so you can trigger it from another phone, and say hey, hit record. So you can record from multiple angles using the this, uh, using Filmic Pro. So so, but I don't know. Like since this isn't really going to be live. I'm not mm-hmm. sure I need any switching no. or remotes. I was just going to walk around, turn each yeah. of the cameras on, and then go yeah. share, mm-hmm. turn the music on, do my thing, and then yeah. import it and just clip all the you know, setup crap out. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That totally works. All right. That totally works. But I get what you're saying. If I wanted to do a live thing. Yeah, if you I, wanted um, to. You know, which I might want to do. I might you know, find that I really get into this, and so I want to do yeah. something live streaming and have more yeah. camera shots and then yeah. sit there myself doing it. Cause I don't, it's not like I have a, maybe I can convince the dog to be my, <laughs> yeah. I'd like choose that other one. <laughs> it's a fun man show. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, right. or so, so, so the lighting, did you have any specific, um, recommendations of brand of lighting? There's a lot of brand of lightings, which cost a lot more money, but I found some, Amazon, uh, either Lumo Studio or there's a, I, I can send you a link of something that I purchased myself. It outputs about 2,400 watts of light. Okay. And um, you can have multiple, and it comes with three sets or three lights. And Are you can. Are pretty portable or am I going to have like more crap in my basement? Um, I can send you a picture and you can okay. decide. Because ideally, something that looks like a, a flat monitor, but has mm-hmm. um, this white light. Would be mm-hmm. Something that's that's easy to store would be another. No, thing absolutely. So these things have these big hoods that just softens the light, and there are LED panels that you can probably prefix, but they cost a little more. Mm-hmm. So something to play with, I guess. Yeah. No. That's, that's, I'm 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 interested in this. I you know I don't know why. It's just. 
but I guess if I'm sitting on your podcast called Hobbies and Hacks, I'm in the right. <laughs> but uh, it's just something I've always been curious about. Yeah. Um, and I and I'm the type of person that you know I don't want to get distracted from what I really do and, and kind of lose my focus of doing mm-hmm. one thing pretty well. But yeah. I do think yeah. it's useful to just have some pickup skills in some of these other areas so that you can make your overall presentation of things much better. And if I do want to share some things out on Facebook or something like that, I don't want it to look like crap. I want yeah, it to good. absolutely. And I know your stuff looks good. I mean, as much as I'm not that interested in your commute home, I, sure. I always <laughs> marvel at the cinematography and the quality of what you do. It's very high quality. Appreciate it. Yeah, the the drive home and the drive to work, that's all just – just a phone, man, just this front facing phone. And, um, I have used some other applications. For example, recently I did a, a Facebook live from within virtual reality. Huh? And Facebook, as you remember or not, um, they purchased Oculus Rift a few yeah. years ago for $2 billion. Yeah. So when they introduced their first application that Facebook did on Oculus Rift was called Facebook Spaces. And this would enable you and three other of your VR buddies to hang out in a virtual space. Wow. And you can then live broadcast from within that or call people up from within that. Like I've made a phone call from within VR to somebody on Facebook Messenger. And he's like, oh, my God, what am I looking? I cannot, I do not have words for this <laughs> because you have your own personal avatar, 3D avatar. And uh, it's pretty, I, it was pretty cool. My neighbor has uh, an HTC Vive mm-hmm. and uh, it's got the geo fencing. So we're down mm-hmm. in the home theater. So, the, you know, the audio is, is pretty killer. And yeah. uh, he brought me down there and there were a couple of apps that, I mean, uh, Google Earth and Google Paint, and then mm-hmm. there was one where it was like a boat underwater and it yep. wham up. But it was it was really intense. the w- The one thing I would say though is that you know I was still tethered with a pretty heavy headset on. Yes. And like after about thirty minutes, I felt the fatigue. You know, I was yeah. getting sweaty, but it was just mm-hmm. it was unbelievably relaxing to yeah. do the paint thing with the music. Mm-hmm. And also on, on Google Earth, um, I do have to confess, I, I, had, I felt like either somewhere between a superhero and a god. Like, you know, He's just flying around. Yeah, you can go up and see the whole Earth and it's like, moving around with your hands like a giant globe and then mm-hmm. back down and walk around the streets. And I was like, this is so cool, this technology. Yeah. It's definitely the future. I'm just surprised it hasn't really caught on as fast as it, as it could, you know, just to kind of bridge both of these conversations. One of Mm -hmm. the things that I, to me, it sounds like a gimme idea and I'm sure Mm -hmm. someone's pursuing it is, you know, it's so freaking expensive. to. It is. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. But, but, but no, hear me out to see concerts, right? I mean, there's real concerts I want to see, but you go look at it and you're like, 500 bucks. I don't like the band that much. Yeah. (laughs) I have to buy an instrument for 500 bucks. Exactly. the, the notion of being able to see the concert virtually, to be there while the concert's being filmed, it could be after the fact. It would be more exciting if it were live. And yeah. then to be able to stand on stage and look mm-hmm. at the crowd while the band's performing, yeah, worth money to me. I would spend, you know, 100 bucks for that ticket. Yeah. And not even go. Just be there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Just they, be there, yeah. A certain amount of seats that they're filling up at I don't know how many hundreds of dollars a ticket. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that the economics of if you, you can at 50 bucks or 75 bucks, if you want, you know, forget about backstage access, front stage yeah. or front stage and backstage access. access. Yeah. I'm not there. It doesn't cost them anything. It's just, they need the camera. Now, I don't know if the camera is too disruptive for the regular live paying, exactly. paying people, but, but just this notion of being able to get on stage and see what they're seeing and kind of just get a, a sip, a little taste of what that feels like uh, would yeah. be awesome. No, absolutely. Um, Muse actually records all of their concerts in 3D, uh, in 360-degree video. 
And there was one time I was visiting their website and you can switch between different cameras and watch their um, show, like their performance from the stage from different angles. VR. 360. So what's cool about VR is that you can go into a 360 degree video and look around. So I'm going to do some research and see if I can go watch those videos in my VR because I have the same HTC Vive and um, it's come a long way. Actually, recently they, they introduced a wireless unit. So you're now no longer tethered to the computer and have, you know, because you can you can only move like 10 feet from the right. computer. Right. But now with the, the wireless tech, it's, it's cool. There's another application called Mindshow. Now I haven't, I haven't broadcasted this on Facebook yet, but um, they launched sometime last year and they've been working a lot on you know, improving how this application works. Mindshow enables you to create your own scripted show in virtual reality. So you can have, let's say you have a three person uh, performance or a two person talking thing. You can take over an avatar in virtual reality and record your own scene and then skip out and then go to the next person and do the other part of the scene. Now you've got a whole scene with two people talking to each other. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I guess that's where the future's going. And five, yeah. 10 years from now, we'll look back at it and laugh about yeah. how arcane it seemed right now. But, <laughs> but it's still, from, from where we are today, it's... Yeah. It seems a very cool, you know. It just uh, uh, it just seems mind blowing in terms of what that experience is because you can't envision beyond yeah. it. It's just it's yeah. Amazing. I yeah. wonder if they'll ever have a need for you know. One of the things I liked about the Vive is that the geofencing where I could actually walk around the room and not just be stationary. Mm-hmm. And I and I was I was telling my friend I was like I wonder if they're gonna if you're gonna see like big warehouses rented out mm-hmm. that, that's really just space for yeah. people to walk around and like, you know, kind of like Westworld or something. You could walk through a whole virtual reality city. I mean, yeah. I saw some things where people were, they had like a machine where it was like a treadmill where mm-hmm. you're walking, but you're really not going anywhere. Yep. And that's, that's obviously a, a, an easier way to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only problem with that is, you know, you don't want to accidentally fall off the treadmill. <laughs> Right. So what I have myself is a called the Omni, uh, Virtuix Omni, and um, they raise a ton of money and they're all over. They're, doing, they're focusing on commercial sales now. So you could go to a theme park and you can have a four-person uh, VR hangout where you, you're in your space, in your spot, and you're running around. Oh, okay. In a virtual game. In fact, at one of the... What do you call it? One of the theme parks we went to, they had a four-person VR experience as well. But you're just sitting in one place or standing in one place shooting down these aliens. No, and, you got to be moving. Yeah, you got to be moving. And so that's what Omni enables you. They have these shoes that you can put on that, and you can run in one place. And you basically wear a harness. You stay in this little device. And wow. you can even sit. You can basically lift your legs up and pretend you're sitting down, and or you could be running. And people are running pretty fast in it, uh, and they're they're playing different games, uh, virtual games, where because right now the only way to move around is the teleport feature. Mm. Yeah. But this enables you so you can actually run with physical body and be carrying gear and equipment. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole notion of kind of being there, being inside whatever it is, whether it's a game or a movie, you know, I, I just think that it's probably going to be, you know, at some point in the future, it's going to feel like we were living in a very 2D world. Yes. When we're watching a movie, uh, it's yeah. kind of like the difference between the old TVs that didn't have remotes and were black and white and you went... Mm-hmm the rabbit ear antennas and you turn the channel and then you know ev that's now integrated into my alexa yeah and it just does it and so i think that vr that whole vr 
entertainment and viewing mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. Which I guess is probably going to be pioneered by porn first, but um, <laughs> but at some point, you know, that that's that's where it's all headed. It's just It is. Of, you know, yeah. when do you get there and who the winners and losers are? Hey, one question for you is Sure. What does your family think of all this stuff? Because you're so you're so deep into this like do they start calling you uh who's the guy from the matrix neo neo are you neo does that like your kids go neo dinner's ready not not yet because they don't have the concept of that my kids are too young oh i know you've got like the whole whole clan there yeah yeah six kids i have three kids oh eight-year-old three-year uh four-year-old and a one-year-old almost are you done i mean can you have some just have some Tell your wife you can just start having some ER kids. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got one of my kids banging on the door. He wants to go play outside. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I listen. I really appreciate the information you've given. You're welcome. I'll let you, you know, know where I where I end up, but I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna try some of that stuff out, and uh, you know, maybe at some point I can come back and uh, we can talk about a different topic. You know what's really funny is that you talking about you're asking about that specific topic i'm actually working on a book chapter talking exactly about mobile video production really and i'm also working on a on a video course on mobile video production <laughs> you know you know you just you know i'm kind of crazy so i just two two different ideas collide mm-hmm. second yeah I had yeah read a story earlier today about how Amazon Mm -hmm. is getting into the publishing industry and just having the authors write directly for them. And so you don't need a publisher. You can just be an Amazon employee, I guess, or an Amazon contracted employee and write the book. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking when you said you were writing a chapter, I'm sure that's a chapter as part of a book, but I want people, you know how like in music, People mm-hmm. stopped buying albums and just started buying songs. Yeah. I wonder if books might go that same path where it's, you know, I don't have to write the whole book. I can just write a chapter. It's yeah. How interested people are in whether or not I should write the second chapter. Well, to tell you the truth, that would be a really interesting way of writing a fiction novel. You get four people together and you say, okay, this is the timeline of the story. And this is a story that we wanted to talk about. Person writes you a chapter. Do, yeah. Without knowing what the other, you just know the characters, but you don't know what their relationship is. Exactly. And then you somehow. I've seen a bunch of crappy movies. Okay. Are kind of like that, where you go, is this how they produced it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but then invariably there's some friends of mine who are like, that was brilliant. Yeah. Well, that was brilliant. That was shit. <laughs> they, and they applied some good video editing to it, it kind of backwards yeah through the storyline um i felt that way about memento i had some yeah memento memento. went backwards yeah and i was but, like i'm not getting any of this no well it's interesting that you mentioned you know you could just do a chapter because this book specific the book that i'm contributing a chapter to is the editor or the main author, he's contacted 24 different professionals in their own space. So it's more like a how-to book where you can buy this book and learn how to do 24 different things and how to get from go from zero to 60. No, so I've seen books like that, you know, like success stories and here's all. The yes. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That's something like that. that. So, well, I'm glad I got it for free and just shared it with the world. So, exactly. Good luck to that guy who's selling the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, this was fun. Um, you know, anytime you have any other any other questions, do you you know you were you know where to reach me? Yeah, let me know. You know, I I always like to hear myself talk. So anytime. Okay, I will let you know when this podcast goes live. All right. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Take it easy. Bye. All right. Bye. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the episode. Thanks so much for listening to our guest on this episode. Please send me an email at junaid at hexandhobbies.com to tell me what you loved about our guest today. You could find links mentioned in this episode on the hacksandhobbies.com website. 